Hey guys, Geshev here and I am currently in Oslo in Norway. You can see the beautiful scenery around me just near the, uh, the docks over there. There's some museums and stuff on that side of the, uh, I think it's like an island or something. And basically I'm outside the Nobel Peace Prize Center. I went to a exhibition today to see this guy over here. His name is, I want to get this right, Karl von Ossietzky. Hopefully I got the pronunciation correct. And just going through the exhibition, there, there are a few things that, you know, hearing the stories and seeing the stories of all the winners of the Nobel Peace Prize uh, triggered a lot of thoughts and a lot of things that I've been thinking about recently. And one of the first things is just the story of this guy, Ossietzky. He's somebody that, first of all, he's not well known. Not a lot of people, when we think about Nobel Peace Prizes, when we think about social reformers, the word that I use all the time, most people think of people like Mahatma Gandhi or Martin Luther King, for example, Mother Teresa. Not all of them I know won the Nobel Peace Prize, um, but they're the people that we think of most when we're thinking about these great characters that I talk about on this channel. And Ossietsky was somebody who, he was a journalist in the 1930s, so after the First World War, he was known for criticizing the Nazi government for a lot of the things that they were doing at the time, which a lot of people hadn't really clocked onto. And because of that, he was persecuted um, and vilified by members of his own community, his own nationality. Just gonna cross the tram lines, I don't wanna die. Uh, it was, yeah, he was, he was persecuted by all these people just for speaking the truth. And he was a, a vehement pacifist and in his story, there were a few things that really stood out to me. One of them was the sacrifice that it requires for the people around you, you know, how important it is to have a really powerful ecosystem. This is something that I remember reading about when I read Long Walk to Freedom, the autobiography of Nelson Mandela. Check it out if you haven't already. And the effect that Ossietsky's writing had on his family. His wife suffered from alcohol abuse because of the financial stress that they were under as a family. His younger daughter had to be sent to England and then to, I think, Sweden, uh, to a boarding school because they feared for her safety. So, you know, whatever it cause you're working towards, and it doesn't have to be anything particularly noble or great or massive like um, Ossietsky or Gandhi or people like that, but whatever it is that we're working towards, it's really important that the people around us are able to support us because they're the ones that we're going to lean on. And the other thing that really came across was the cost. Uh, there was a list of all of the people who've ever been persecuted, um, who've won the Nobel Peace Prize. And it was a long list. I'll show you a clip in the B-roll. And it just made me think again, you know, whatever you're working towards, there's going to be a sacrifice and you have to give something in order to receive something. And sometimes and quite often, I know this with the stuff that I'm doing, you have to give more than you ever receive. And it's, it's a difficult thing to accept because we've been conditioned from a very young age to think in terms of commodity. Like I have X thing, I give it to you and I receive X thing in return. You think about, you know, just your feelings for other people. If you're working hard at work and you, you do a little bit of extra hours on a Friday afternoon when you're supposed to be going to see your friends or you're in a relationship and you give more than the other person, you expect, and, you, and so you should, that you receive exactly the same in return. But it's not going to be clear cut. It's not going to be exactly 50-50, is it? Or, you know, and even if it is, it's not going to be the case forever at every moment throughout uh, that situation. And that's the thing that it made me think about, you know, I, I would love to be in that room as one of the, uh, I'll show you a clip here of, um, these are all of the winners of the Nobel Peace Prize in this cool exhibition. I'd love to be there, I'll be honest with you, but can I get to that level? Who knows? And it requires a tremendous amount of sacrifice and work and really kind of the thing that I was thinking about reading Ossietsky's story is that you really have to live and breathe whatever it is that you're fighting towards. And for him, that was, you know, challenging Nazi Germany at a time where he went to a concentration camp where he was mentally and physically broken down. He uh, contracted tuberculosis. So by the time he even won the Nobel Peace Prize, 
it, the cost, he'd already had to pay the consequences. So there was no kind of glory in it, but he did it for the sake of that value and the sake of what he believed in. And I don't know how many people uh, out there seem to be getting in the way of people. Uh, I don't know how many people are out there that are willing to do that, including myself. And that's something that I'd like to aspire towards and I try and aspire towards. And I'm sure a lot of you guys do too. Um, that's why you're watching this five minute rant uh, so far at least but yeah just a few things to think about there and uh, you know I haven't made any videos for a while I said I was taking a little break but felt inspired uh, visiting this place to just pick up the camera and kind of just talk because I definitely feel like I am shedding a lot of old beliefs and old values and old identities and creating something new something better as you know it's all about creating a stronger more powerful version of ourselves so that we can create and be the kind of change that we want to see and uh you know hearing these stories of people like Ossietsky where's it gone it's over here somewhere that's the building <laughs> um it's inspiring you know to think I'm already doing so much or you might already be doing so much but what more can you do how can you take it to that next level so hope this little rant and the scenery behind me uh, created a useful video for you I'm gonna maybe I'm not sure yet uh, document some more stuff on my trip uh, this is a period where I'm basically just disconnecting for anyone who's wondering uh, no social media no videos literally doing nothing and it's the first time I've done that since I started Revolution Hive so it's been an interesting uh, journey I'm really enjoying it literally just bought a one-way ticket to Oslo here in Norway and uh, I have no idea what's gonna come next but I'm really looking forward to it hoping to do some trekking and then I'm uh, gonna be volunteering in the jungle refugee camps in Calais so that I can kind of experience uh, what's happening over there and, and learn a bit more so as always guys hope you enjoyed the video comment down below it's good to be back in some shape or form and uh, yeah, big things are coming, so peace.